Hello my friends! In this video I'll show you how easy it is to paint a cottage. And for this I'm using my best friend the pencil. Because it is true that behind a good painting there's a good sketch. So for this I uh, sharpen up my pencil and I'm sketching with very, very light strokes the, um, the house that will be painted later on. The purpose of this, first of all, it's to position the house. Where do I want it? How high? How much on the left? How much on the right? And I chose to place it a little bit off center. So it creates a little bit more of an airy look. Now, besides that, I want to sketch the structural elements of my house. For example, how tall I want the roof to be comparing to the rest of the house. How many windows I want to place, where I want to put the door and so on. And here, my friends, if you want to replicate this painting, you have complete liberty here and you can add as many ornamental elements as you like. So I do want to invite you here to be creative and to create your own house. My plan for this project is to use worm colors, mostly natural stone colors. After that, I want to put texture on the walls and on the roof. And I want to place a garden on each side of the house and of course an alley. That's uh, my vision for this um, cottage. There are some other things that I can add, for example, some uh, mountains somewhere far in distance or a lake, a bridge, some people's uh, animals and so on. But I want to keep it a little simple and cozy. For any landscape project, we need to know what season we want to replicate. And that is especially if we imagine a landscape. We need to be able to put those elements that are specific for each season. And also we want to know as an estimation what time of the day it is. We want to be able to know how much light we will put there or how much darkness we need to put there. For me, I've chose to do a late summer afternoon. Usually I'm not advocating for straight lines, but because this is an architectural project, let's call it that, we need to make sure that all the lines are exactly as they should be. I'm saying as they should be because it depends on what kind of uh, building slash house we want to paint. If it's a modernist house, then of course you're going to have a lot of curvy lines and some of them will challenge balance. But for this project is a realist cottage and I'm looking for all the lines to be parallel. I'm using a soft eraser to get rid of those lines that I don't need. I want a clean drawing and for this I will get rid of all those lines that help me to build the house.
adding a mini roof here because I want to put a porch in front of the house and I'm rounding it up I'm doing the same thing that I did with the main roof I think it looks more ornamental like this with uh, some uh, some elements of decoration here will be the door and I'm extending it but you know I have to clean some lines because there are too many right here so this is the door and we'll have a little window that looks good enough and uh, I'm extending also those two lines that will define the porch in front something like this this will be the major sketch for the house and now I want to um, put a wall here this is where the wall will begin and will extend in front of the house this is the other side of the wall and that's it this wall will um, will be a good base for my garden this will be let's say plants lots of plants here and uh, this will be the stairs it will go all the way down and this will be more plants lots 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 of plants on the other side of the garden too maybe a little narrow mm, I'll think about it okay so plants 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 and on the other side more plants that's it it's time to paint now I've loaded my brush with yellow and white and I will start with the windows I will paint all of them with the same color I want to give that look of uh, lights that are on inside the house and you can see it from the outside. I'm using a little gradient uh, of uh, white and yellow and just a little bit of orange. Not too much because otherwise it will look like inside it's a red light and I don't want that. As I mentioned before, the time in my painting, it's late afternoon, so that's why I chose this color. If you choose a different time of the day, of course, you will use more gray or blues, or let's say if the shades are on, then different colors.
the under layer for my house will be this um, reddish brown and I will apply a uniform layer everywhere where there are walls of course I will come later on and I will add texture and more color to it I want right now to define very roughly the areas that are darker and the areas that are brighter so you're gonna see me putting a little white here and there and then blending everything. At this um, stage, the purpose is not to create a uniform layer, but to mix a lot of colors such as green and then to blend it up so that corner will have a uh, cooler look. I'm trying to avoid the windows as much as I can, but if um, I will go over it a little bit, that is not a problem because later on I will come and I will fix that problem. Under the window, it's a reddish area. The reason why um, I like here a patchy look with more colors is because the surface will be covered with bricks and I want the bricks to be a little different, not all of them to have the same color. That will make it look a little bit more interesting.
house it's almost done so I need to paint the chimney too I'm using the same color but for the other side I want to use a slightly darker color that will create a uh, interesting contrast and will also suggest the shape the roof to be a colorful gray so for this I mixed a little green red white just a tiny bit of yellow I don't want to be too much yellow in it and uh, I'm applying a layer of this color everywhere on the roof it looks a little bit too red so I want to to make it less red but now it's too green so I will try to um, somehow blend these two colors without having a, um, a color that will stand much I don't want the roof to be either red or green but <clears throat> again this is the first layer it will be covered later on and you will uh, have a different look The roof looks neutral enough right now and I'm happy with the way it looks. It will look totally different when we add texture later on. Now moving on to the background, I said before that I want lots, lots, lots of plants, but I changed my mind and I will put here some evergreens. Yes, they look more yellow right now, they're not green, but um, I want to first to position my trees and uh, I want to suggest that they are somewhere very very far and we don't see much of it we see only the silhouette I'm thinking about putting a tree right here but um, I'm not very sure about it probably not probably I'm not gonna put a tree here I don't I, I will think about it let's uh, let's say that I will think what I want to add here if I want a tree but I believe I will um, 
stay with bushes uh it will look better with with bushes definitely that's the beauty of painting there are no mistakes it's just changing the mind and that's what i'm doing right now i'm giving my painting a different destination For the left side, I want a garden filled with plants and flowers. And for this, I'm doing the under layer first. It's the same color that I used for the house. And a little bit of green. Of course, there's no surprise. I need to use green here because they are plants. And I will fill everything with water. For the sky i'm looking for a cloudy sky and i will cover everything with this uh, gray and of course i will cover those three that i did before and that will create a look of a um, tree being somewhere in the distance i'm going around the roof I am trying not to cover much of that uh, the house with gray and for the other side I will fill my sky too. I don't know if you noticed but uh, I've changed my brush. I'm using a bigger brush right now. Um, it gives me, uh, it covers a bigger area faster so I like bigger brushes when I paint sky. In my painting, the sky is not the major element. That's why I'm not going to put a lot of clouds in here. I'm not going to make that epic sky that uh, you see in other um, videos of mine. This time I will keep the sky to a minimum. I will fill everything with gray and I will put here and there some bright clouds. I want to cover everything with paint so I will apply a watery layer of uh, yellow brown here and uh, I will cover everything. 
the reason why I'm doing this is because the painting will have a uniform look if I put everywhere the same color. And talking about everywhere, I want to cover the roof with the same leftover that I have in the brush. It will not change uh, the color overall, but um, it will give a foggy look and I think it's, um, it's nice. My uh, support, it's drier, it's not dried completely, it's still a little wet and it's okay to paint over at this uh, point. As you can see, the trees that I did before were completely in the fog and in the mist. That's a look that I like very much and I will keep it like that. And on top of it, I want to add another layer of trees. This time, the trees will be more defined and more green. This tree is the closest and that's why it's the most green and I will put some more accents here, a few brighter um, parts of the, of the branches here. The top it's a reddish and then on the bottom it turns more into green. And I think I want to put one more accent here and I want to define it a little bit more. It looks prettier when it's uh, uh, defined and when it has areas that are darker and some other areas that are um, brighter. For this tree, I've used the green, white, yellow and black putting another tree right here. When uh, we do a tree first I uh, draw a line and then starting from the top all the way down I do all sort of branches and I use different colors but the, um, the secret here is to use very short strokes. Thank you. 
I want to add a cloud here and I'm uh, blending all with my finger. Actually, I will add a few more clouds and I will blend them all out with the finger. Just like this. We'll put some on top. And just because I have white on my brush, I want to put a few accents on the windows. I'm going back to my clouds. A few accents here. They look pretty when they're bright. To add texture to the walls, we will follow a few steps. I want my house to be covered with stone. In order to do that, first I will have to draw that stone. So with white and with a very, very thin brush, I'm drawing all sorts of shapes. Sometimes they're round shapes, sometimes they're squares, sometimes it's something that cannot be defined. The um, secret here is variation. Some of them are long, some of them are short, some of them are little, that is what will give uh, the entire house a beautiful look. Now I'm working around the window and I'm continuing with my square, with my rounds all the way down. There is another area that needs to be filled and that will be the front part of the house. I will repeat the same steps for the next fragment of the house. I'm going all around the roof, um, all around the window, and I fill everything with stone. This step, it's the longest, but it's also where um, the most interesting thing are happening and where the house, it's starting to get closer to what I envision to be. Um, initially, I was thinking about covering the entire house with bricks, 
But then I said, you know, if I put bricks on the roof and bricks on a wall, maybe it will not look very nice. So I was thinking about creating a little variation. So that's when I said for, um, for stone on the walls. Now, if you want, you can put bricks and you can leave the, the roof simple or I'm pretty sure that you can find your own version of decoration when it comes to your house if you choose to do this painting. I uh, am adding another layer of white and I'm enhancing the stone but also I'm taking the occasion to reshape those windows and uh, before because uh, I was a little negligent I uh, covered some of the windows now I want to fix that little mistake
first fragment it's done and now I'm working on the second one and I'm doing the same thing I'm using white and I'm enhancing all those lines that I did before I'm working around the window and now each stone begins to be more contour and more alive here I'm refining and I'm also reshaping the stones
just to make sure that I have all my lines in place, I will go over it again and I will check my horizontals, my verticals, and uh, that will help to put a little bit the house where it should be. Now uh, it's time to fill the windows with more lines. This is one, two, and three. And I will put one in the middle, but a little later. I'm sorry for my head covering the camera, but I had to get closer in order to be able to see those lines better. I want some of the stones to be darker than the other one and I will go over it again with um, a darker brown. Not all of them, just some, it will create a little bit of dynamic and um, I will contour the inside of the windows.
In order to achieve a more uniform look, I will cover the entire walls with yellow. That will make it look better. And I'm also going to cover the windows too. It will blur some of the colors that I did before. I want to add a dark brown in the shadows to create more dimension and I will put a uh, soft layer of this color and then I will blend it. For the roof, as I said before, I will put bricks and for that I will draw a series of straight lines, well, approximately straight, let's say that. I will um, use later on my uh, ruler to make them look better, it's just that right now I want to position them. And on the other side also more lines. I will try to connect the lines so that they will you look uh, better, just like this. And it's always a good time to put an accent. I'm contouring the roof here and the other side. I will go over it again with the ruler to make sure that the lines are where they should be. And I will go one by one, starting from the bottom up, even though at some point they overlap, even if they don't overlap. It was um, important for me to make it look better. Now probably you are wondering if we can do this uh, without going over it again. If we can do all these lines from the beginning to 
be straight of course you can do it or you can even measure those um, distances to make sure that each one it's equally placed but um, for me I, uh, I wanted to do this um, without measuring and I think it looks um, it looks good the way it is now I am adding a little verticals to define the bricks and on the next row I will alternate the lines. Going on the next row, here I dropped a little bit more water than I should have. I dab it a little bit and it will dry without uh, creating a lot of mess. You already know that in order to get a beautiful looking image and that applies to everything you want to paint, we need to balance the light and the shadow. Here I'm adding more shadow and then I'm blending everything together. When it comes to painting, I do believe that it's better to add multiple layers, but I want those layers to be transparent so that we can adjust the amount of shadow that we want to place. So you will see me coming over and over with more and more shadow.
I have white on my brush and I'm adding few accents on the roof. I'm not gonna enhance each one of the bricks, just uh, here and there. I've decided to add more decoration to the house. If you want to stop here, that is totally fine because the house looks good the way it is. But if you want to add a little something, I will say, let's put some white accents and some um, decoration on top of each one of the roofs. After I did the first line, we're doing a little zigzag on the edge. Now we do the same thing on the other side. And more on this one. First a line. the other one to complete the V I go several times on top of it just to make sure that it's uh, opaque and now the zigzag And of course, we need to paint the door too. For this, I picked a uh, dark green. I uh, made a combination of red and um, green. These are the, the main colors that I've used for the, for the house too. And uh, I left that uh, little window uncovered I'm applying shadow I'm using for this a darker brown and I do some texture here. Some verticals. And in order to blend everything, I'm using 
another layer of gray. This time it's a very watery gray and when it will um, when you will blend you will take the color from around the edges and you will blend it with what is inside in the middle. For the garden I already painted with orange that wall it will be bricks also. I'm adding few touch-ups it's just a solid color. Here and there I put some accents with green and I'm blending it together. I want to define the edge a little bit. And this would be the stairs. This is the other edge for the stairs. My color it's very watery right now and you can see the color running all over the place. I will have to let it sit for a while to dry and uh, I will come back and redo the stairs. On the left side, I will uh, place some plants here. I'm using my big brush and a mix of green and red. This will be some tall plants that, and they're growing up. For this, I'm just dabbing my brush. I'm using a brighter green and I'm doing the edges right now with this green. I'm filling all the space. 
and some spots on the other side. For the flowers, I will put white first. I already changed my brush, right now I'm using the smaller brush. And this looks like um, a little roses. Here I am sketching a plant that has big leaves. Because um, my support is still wet, white will get some of the green that is underneath. I will come with several layers in order to define this uh, plant. Right now I'm on a sketching phase. Now I'm just dragging the color on inside. With yellow, I'm adding random flowers here and there. With a bright yellow, I'm adding tall flowers. It's almost the same thing that I did with the trees on the other side, but this time I'm using a different motion and of course a different color.
the stairs are dry right now so I can work on this area too I can come back and put some shadow uh, with only black I'm redefining the the stairs I'm defining each step more plants more leaves It's time to put some red accents. I will start with the right side, but my red is very, very watery. Need to clean my brush. I don't need that much water. And I want to drag those flowers over the edge. More yellow flowers. And of course, red.
liquid white I want to make a bush here that it's flowing somehow and it's covering that edge and it's also covering a part of the wall first I will position the edge and after that I will add accents and flowers It's always good to put some dark accents that will create more contrast, adding few dots here and there. And then I will move on to the right and I will do the same thing, I will put accents first along the wall and then where are the plants. I'm using a watery color and I will blend it with my finger.
For the wall texture, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the roof. First few lines. And then I will divide each one with short verticals. This is the first row. Now the second. And the last. And there you go. This is a wall.
and there you have it this is my cottage painting i hope you enjoy it and see you next time with another fun project bye bye